Hi, my name is Emma Brown and I am a member of the team at Prickles and Paws Hedgehog Rescue. So I actually grew up in a town about 300 miles away from Cornwall, but 20 years ago I moved down to Cornwall and four years ago I started as a volunteer at Prickles and Paws Hedgehog Rescue after finding a hedgehog outside my stables out during the daytime. So it was in June, um, I remember it because it was very hot and there was quite a large hedgehog just in the middle of the road outside our stables. So I got a blanket out of my car, bundled the hedgehog up in it and took um, that hedgehog to the rescue. I took it out there, they checked it over and I got my first lesson in hedgehog behaviour, which is that whilst it's unusual for them to be out during the day as a nocturnal animal, occasionally in the summer, large hedgehogs, and it's always the female ones, may be seen out during the day when they're taking a break from nursing their young. So they'll pop out of their nest um, during the daytime to grab a snack, maybe some water, and well, they can have up to five babies at a time. So I bet they need a break. And that's probably what happened with that one. So I took her back, popped her back in a hedge near where she was, and um, she shot off very, very quickly indeed, probably wondering what happened to her. It was great for me to find uh, Prickles and Paws on pretty much on my doorstep, a wildlife rescue just a few minutes from my house. Um, it's also such a welcoming team. Um, they had they were willing to share information and they, they want everyone to be as passionate about hedgehogs as they are. And Prickles and Paws was started by a mother and daughter team, the unstoppable duo of Katie and Diane South. And the wonderful Martin South, husband and father, is very much a part of it as well. But those two ladies certainly keep it going and push it forward. At Prickles and Paws Hedgehog Rescue, we have three main aims, and that is rescue, rehab and release. Now, here in the UK, our hedgehogs have been officially classified as vulnerable to extinction as of January, July 2020. Yeah, so that status is given using the same kind of data and analysing as data that is used for all animals. So when we talk about things that are vulnerable to extinction, we tend to think about the big things. We'll think about elephants, we'll think about rhinos, we'll maybe think about some of our sea creatures. But we've got one that's vulnerable to extinction in our own back gardens and we can do something to change that and it's a wonderful thing to be a part of. Yes, at Prickles and Paws, we are kind of at the sharp end and we are with the injured hedgehogs, the sick hedgehogs, the orphaned hoglets, which is the name for a baby hedgehog, which I think is wonderful. It's a hoglet um, and it suits them. Um, but the most important thing that and the most important part of my job is getting the message out there and letting people know how they can help these wonderful little animals in their own back garden. So what we do um, is a big part of my job. I do a lot of talks via Zoom, like we are here, to schools, to brownies, to scouting groups. Um, getting the, the young people involved is really, really important. Schools have green areas now, so we see children going out making hedgehog boxes, putting out footprint tunnels so they can see what's coming in and out of their green space, and really seeing it develop, and seeing how it encourages other wildlife too. On the other end of the scale, I talk to gardening groups, to WIs, which is the Women's Institute. So to the slightly older generation who are probably used to seeing more hedgehogs and they have noticed the decline in their numbers as well. It's something like a 66% decline since 2018. So why hedgehogs? Well, they're an iconic British mammal for a start. They're our only spiny mammal. Um, they're mentioned in Shakespeare, they're mentioned in the Bible. Of course, there's not a kid in the land that doesn't love a bit of a sonic the hedgehog. The hedgehog's presence is indicative of a good and healthy ecosystem and good biodiversity, which is something what we want. Their diet is incredibly varied. They eat beetles, snails, slugs, earthworms and caterpillars. And here, certainly in the UK, they're often known as the gardener's friends because they eat those slugs and snails, the pesky little critters that will eat everybody's vegetables. We're dealing with wild animals, so they are absolutely not pets. So the ones that we deal with are very different from the African pygmy hedgehogs that you'll see on cards, the ones you'll see wearing little wellies or sat in deck chairs or things. 
they're a completely different species. So hedgehogs, they're a wild animal, they're the European hedgehog, so all across Europe. There's about 13 different species of hedgehog across the world, however. So I am specifically talking about the European hedgehog. Now, they may seem quite placid and quite inoffensive. In fact, their, their defence is simply to snapshot into that prickly ball. Very effective defence, turning yourself into a big ball of spite. So when people come across them and they're in a ball, uh, they may think that they're, you know, they're quite placid. But the truth of the matter is they will be frightened when we intervene too much. Just because they don't bite or scratch or kick, it doesn't mean that they're not scared. And they've certainly got their defensive method with that tight curl into a ball. Last year, we admitted 1,300 hedgehogs to our hospital. This year so far, so we're, ne we're nearly on a par with it, it's about 1,250. Out at night, I'm all right. Out in the day, I'm not okay. So <laughs> that's kind of the most basic thing of hedgehog care that I can possibly um, give you in the best advice. So um, they can be up to 1.3 kilos, maybe a little bit more. Um, there's no difference between the males and the females. They can both be as big as that. Um, I think the biggest one we had in this year was 1.4 kilos. Big, healthy adult male who had unfortunately decided that he was going to make a nest under somebody's brand new decking and got stuck. Okay, so hedgehogs don't live in a family group. Unlike some mammals such as foxes and badgers, they don't stay together. In fact, babies only stay with mom for about six to eight weeks. So they're independent very, very quickly. So we can provide them with more places to, leave, to, to live. So leaving an area of your garden to be messy, um, which is great for someone like me who does not like gardening at all. Things like piles of logs, long grass, brambles, thick bushes. Um, that's ideal hedgehog habitat leaving a pile of leaves so not sweeping it up just leaving it in a corner that's like that's bedding for hedgehogs they'll live in that straw they carry it in their mouth and take it back to their nest and then they kind of spin around to weave a nest so at prickles and paws one of the things that we can do for hedgehogs that have some leg issues maybe some muscle weakness or wastage those that are recovering from having a fracture pinned which our wonderful vet does we will use hydrotherapy. So we use warm water and a paddling pool and they can swim, so they swim quite well, obviously all under supervision and not for very long. So we get them swimming to help build up their muscles. Um, just like with people, the water supports their weight and get those legs moving in the way that they should without too much stress on the joints. Thank you for taking an interest in hedgehogs and Prickles and Paws Hedgehog Rescue. We hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about hedgehogs. If you'd like to know more, head over to our website, our Facebook or Instagram. We post lots of pictures and stories about our patients. So we'd love to see you there. Thank you.